doing, everybody? My name's Harry James. You know, there's nothing wrong with a little cockiness, a little brashness you got. But sometimes a little cockiness can go a long way for the good or for the bad. If they're your team, you love it. You love the cockiness. You love the brashness. If they're not your favorite team, you don't like it. You hate it. In fact, you think it's a little arrogant if you're a little cocky. That's how Texas is, baby. <laughs> we'll preview Texas. Plus, this is an OU broadcast, so you don't want to talk all Texas. You got some OU news for you. Some pretty exciting OU news in the recruiting side, by the way. And uh, much more. And you will get to see it all coming up next. We'll hand it off to the coach. Then we're off, baby. Let's go. Take it away, Coach Switzer. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome back to the show, everybody. My name's Harry Th James. First of all, thank you, Coach Switzer, for that enlightening message of We Beat Texas. Speaking of Texas, the next game that we're going to look at for the Sooners is the Texas Longhorns. Um, the Longhorns play their home games at DKR. That's Daryl K. Royal Stadium, by the way. So they named it after a former Sooner. All-American played here at OU. 8-5 uh, and five for the current Longhorns overall. 5-4 and four in Big 12 play. That tied them with our other rival, Oklahoma State. Uh, other teams like Kansas State and Iowa State also finished with a 5-4 and four conference record. Their eighth win, though, guys, came in a bowl game. Unlike most, unlike all the other teams in the Big 12, they actually, Texas, that is, won their, their bowl game. They embarrassed the Utah Utes 38-10 in the Alamo Bowl. Under the leadership of their head coach and Mr. Cocky himself, Tom Herman. Like I said, if you're going to be a little cocky, you're going to be a little brash, you got to have some backing behind you. you got to have some good players that you can be brash with, some confident with. And they got him. He's including a quarterback, Sam Ellinger. Ellinger has a lot of fight and a lot of tenacity. I like watching this kid play. He's not my favorite player, being an Oklahoma fan, but I love to just watch him play. He is a fighter. And he wears number 11 for the Longhorns. Last year, while the horn on his helmet, he passed for 3,663 yards, 32 touchdowns, 10 INTs last season. Longest pass of the year, 75 yards, averaged 281.8 yards in the air per ball game last season. In 13 games. The other. We'll, we'll go to the right. That's the passing attack. Let's forget the pass atta passing attack, baby. Let's look for the rushing attack. The rushing attack is led by Cavante Ingram. He wears number 26 for the Shorthorns. Uh, 144 carries for him. Uh, to go with five. 853 yards on the ground, seven touchdowns. Longest run last year, 68 yards, averaged 65.6 in average last season, 
uh, per game played in all 13 games. Of course, also playing in all 13 games, as we already know, Sam Ellinger. He's also the leading passer on the team, and he's second in rushing. Number 11, Sam Ellinger, 163 yards on the ground, uh, carries last season, 163 carries last season, to match with 663 yards on the ground, seven touchdowns in his own right. His longest run was from 31 yards out, averaged uh, 51.0 yards per on the game, on the ground per game last season, in 13 games. So you got Ellinger, and if you got Ellinger, one of my favorite quarterbacks to watch outside of the Oklahoma quarterbacks, you got to have some receivers to throw to, or you're just going to be a dud, right? He's got some receivers to throw to, baby. Third on the team coming back from Texas, because first and second graduated, but third didn't, and that is Brandon Eagle. Brandon Eagles. 13 Brandon Eagles. At the end of the day, 32 receptions last season. 522 yards on the in the air, six touchdowns. His longest catch last season, 73 yards, averaged uh, 43.5 average in 12 games. Now Brendan, of course, was third on the team last season, so they lost a lot of talent that received a lot of passes from Sam Ellinger last season. So you go down from third and at Eagles and fourth. Fourth is actually, would be on the team, by the way, would be Tyreek Mack. Uh, if he were on the team last year, he would be fourth on the team with uh, 25 receptions last year, 323 yards per ball game, and average uh, th uh, 323 yards is what he caught last year, a touchdown. Longest pass was some 36 yards out, averaged 26.9, and average per ball game in 12 games, and he's a grad transfer, guys, from Michigan, and he'll be eligible in 2020. All right, guys, that will do it offensively, but, you know, if Texas is going to get back to Arlington and face us twice like they did, and they beat Georgia a couple of years ago, they got to have some defensive players coming back, right? They do! They do! Uh, 46, Joseph Os S.A.O.A., uh, and 7, Caden Stearns. Uh, we'll start with Joseph Asai, Asa 46, uh, 90 tackles at the end of the day last season. Four, uh, one forced fumble, zero fumbles recovered, two picks as a linebacker in all 13 games. Now, nine games is how many Caden Stearns played in last season. Remember, he was injured for quite a bit of the season. This is one of my favorite um, defensive players to watch, uh, if he weren't a Longhorn. He, he's number seven, and he's Caden Stearns. 59 tackles last season. A fourth, uh, zero forced fumbles and fumbles recovered. Did have an interception last season in nine games as a defensive back for the Shorthorns of Texas. Special teams... Oklahoma fans, they need to remember this kid. In fact, I'm pretty sure that the current Arizona Cardinal, Kyler Murray, remembers this kid. In fact, when Kyler was named the official starting quarterback at Oklahoma and finally got his shrine to shine, this was his only loss in regular season play. And it was because of Cameron Dicker. Dicker the kicker. He's a junior now. Uh, and in his junior, in his sophomore campaign, 14 for 18, that is 77.8% accuracy, uh, 57, a career, uh, a, uh, season long for him last season in 13 games. Punting for 2019, that went to, if you were going to talk about Texas, that we're going to go to Ryan Brachewski, 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 32 attempts last season. Average 41.7 in average, 56 along in nine games for the Longhorns. Mr. Confident, Mr. Cocky, Mr. Arrogant himself, Tom Herman's in charge of the horn. He's a California Lutheran grad, 1997, was the head coach of the Hot Houston Cougars in 2015 and 2016. 
uh, before accepting the job in Austin in 2017 and is still there to this day. Coaching record at Texas and Houston include 66 games, which includes a 47-19 overall record. That's a 71.2% winning clip and a 5 and 4 uh 4 and 5 bowl record of course that is a pretty good record a game under 500 in 9 games all right we talked about Texas guys now that recruiting part that we were talking about it's the 4th of July baby fireworks were a blazing last night and even if you're like Todd Listenby on the franchise and you don't like the fireworks, you're an OU guy, you got to like these fireworks, baby. What about this? The number one quarterback and one of the top defensive backs in the country, both committed to Oklahoma in the last couple of days. We'll start on the defense where Alex Grinch not this year, but next year, we'll have a pretty good-looking defensive back. Um, Latrell McCutcheon, four-star kid from uh, uh, Rivals. Four-star kid out of Austin, Texas. Look for him to kind of get things started. But the one that we're really going to take a look at, the one that people are really going to want to see, this kid. All right? Now, come back. Go back with me. Just after when me and my buddies got back from the bowl game, the Sugar Bowl. I mean, yeah. And um, the Peach Bowl, I should say. And we then got confirmation on Twitter and all the other things that Vandergriff, Rock Vandergriff, who was committed to Oklahoma, is not committed to Oklahoma anymore. He's going to go to Georgia and stay home. Well, there was a quarterback in the rings. Little did the Sooner fans know. And many others know. And he made his official commitment yeah, last night. He's a five-star athlete. He's a five-star quarterback from the Washington, D.C. area. He is the highest-ranked quarterback to sign with Oklahoma since Rhett Bomar. And get this, guys, not only that, what about this? He's the highest offensive uh, recruit to sign with Oklahoma since, drumroll please, a Washington, D.C. Native, native in his own right now, Adrian Peterson. That is a quarterback in Caleb Williams. Five stars. One, two, three, four, five star quarterback. From the D.C. area. Commits to Oklahoma. His other. Now his other recruits. Uh, recruiting visits. Or uh, fi his final couple. Included. Those aforementioned LSU. Bangling Bengals Tigers. And the homegrown. Maryland Terrapins. Uh, and he chose. Of course. As we all know. O.U. Congratulations, Caleb. Looking forward to hopefully seeing you on campus here pretty darn soon. Remember, now, he will probably come in early if he can. And that's really why I think that this is going to go be, be uh, made official thus far. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. My name is Harry James. I'll be able to catch this on all my other videos on YouTube. Boomer Sooner on TV YouTube. Also on Facebook, Harry James Taylor. Or on Twitter, at Harry. Alright guys, thanks for watching and boomer sooner everybody. Peace!